Welcome to the interview. I'm Susan Lee McDonald. Today, I'm standing on the banks of the famous Han River, the lifeline of Seoul and Korea. Many people have begun to call Seoul its home, including today's guest, expat Michael Aronson, a man behind numerous award-winning and self-made videos about Korea and its culture. Let's go meet him today. The former New Yorker and one-man show Michael Aronson, sharing Korean culture through self-made YouTube videos. Showcasing diverse topics related to Korean culture, creating a stir among many netizens. From filming to editing, a nearly professional one-man production. Michael was recognized for his skills and awarded grand prize from the National Brand Committee in 2010. Just a regular student majoring in East Asian Studies at NYU. In 2005, he had an opportunity to visit Korea for the first time as an exchange student. As time passed, he became fascinated by Korean culture and it didn't take him long to decide to stay. Michael Aronson, sharing his talents and his unique view of Korea to the world. Let's meet him on the interview today. At Seoul's amazing Han River, the Namsan Tower in the far distance, one can see all of Seoul in one fell swoop. Susan, hi. Hi, Michael. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Wow, I'm so happy that we've decided to meet here at the Han River. It's beautiful today. Yeah, it's great. You can see everything all around. Yeah. We're standing in front of, what are these, the floating islands? Yeah, they're, I guess they're very new and they're modern looking. It looks so cool. Yeah. So when do you normally come out to the Han River? I, I mean, on weekends, just when the weather's nice and I need a break. Yeah, you need a little R&R. &R. <laughs> it's just nice to walk through because it just keeps going. Yeah, do you ever go go running or biking here? Um, jogging, walking, just at my own pace. Um, when it's not so busy, or even when it is, it's nice to see what people are doing around here. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are some of your other like favorite spots of Seoul uh, along the Han River? I mean, I like uh, Yoido. I like the Oksu area, just under the bridges, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Michael, I can't wait for us to sit down and get straight into the interview. All right. We'll find out more about you. We'll have a seat. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Thank you so much for being a part of our show here on The Interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm very happy to take a look at what you've created, why you are all the rage here in Korea with your videos. Um, you have a special name in Korean called Ma Ikul. Yeah. How did you come up with that? Um, a friend gave it to me just one day. She's like, I'm going to give you a Korean name. Uh, I guess Ma is an existing last name. so. We didn't have to look that up, but ik means uh, like a benefit or something good, and hu means kind of to spread it. So I guess the meaning is to spread some benefit. Very cool. So do you like your new Korean name? I like it. I like it because Koreans like it. They seem to think it's really clever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess I can take credit, but even though I didn't really come up with it myself. Yeah. And now you've been in Korea for the past five years. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And uh, tell us when you started to make these videos. Um, I started to make videos a little more than two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I just had the, the kind of the passion, the motivation, the drive to do something creative and I wanted to use uh, music and videos. I've always just kind of had an interest in video stuff, but I never studied it. You've made a lot of videos about Korea and Korean culture. Why is that? <laughs> um, it's mostly kind of uh, Talking about my own personal reflection, like as a foreigner living in Korea, I mean, I've been here for a few years and you would think maybe at some point I just take it for granted or get bored, but every day is kind of like I'm still in Korea. So it's more just making videos about what I'm thinking about every day. Yeah. So you've had, you know, you've been curious about a couple of things. With it, so have you tried to unravel your curiosity by doing the video? That's partly it. I mean, I feel like I've picked up things that at least other people aren't making videos about. I don't know if they're thinking about them and 
I also make videos to see if anyone wants to comment, if they're thinking similar things, if they have more insight. And the people are nice. They gave us Kim Yoon-jin on Lost and Kim Yana on Ice. And Samsung TVs, Hyundai cars, LG phones. Hey, take off your shoes, we're home. Kimchi soup ubiquitous and it's good for you too. So food's good pork, noodles on ice. And it all comes with side dishes and a cup of rice. But learning the letter takes only a week and four to six seasons follows the best. Watch out for fans who know to cause sad. People are fashionable, trending and thin. They love to watch soccer and cheer when they win. Old boys popular all around the world. As both rain and the wonder girls. Go surfing in Busan, flying to Incha. Doing that Pamela John, kicking in Kumcha. Fun in Neverland, betting in Kwanja. Heading down to Suwon, running at Hwasan. Walking through Chunga Chan, strolling up Kamsan. Rocking in Hongdae, rolling on Kanga. Muscling in Boron, climbing up Sorks. Winding and dining in Kanama, Chong Dam. Well, I'd love to take a look at a couple of your videos, and if you could give me the director's cut, kind of play-by-play -play of what's going on, sure. um, and uh, some commentary, that'd be great. Right. So let's take a look here on my little handy-dandy smartphone. All right. So, pressing play. Now, this is your, your Korean Wave video, yes? Yeah. I made this one two years ago. You actually look a lot younger here. Um, I'm not wearing glasses in the beginning, <laughs> which could account for it, but that is setting things up. So as we're about to see in a few seconds, I'm going to put on my shades and I'm wearing a hanbo. <laughs> uh, the concept for the video was just to feature all these different aspects of Korea. And because I was going to be singing the song and rapping, I knew I, I was going to be in the video, but I'm like, well, I'm not Korean. How, what can I do to personally represent Korean culture? And a friend suggested, you know, wear a hanbok in the video. So I went out and bought one. And oh, wow, so you, you got this hanbok especially for the video? Just for the video. But it was very nice and handsome. Thanks. <laughs> I think it was worth it. Uh, I like the effect. I like, I like the colors of the hanbok. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt the shades kind of made it work. I kind of, I don't know, it looks kind of empty with just a foreigner wearing a hanbo. So I feel, some people think the shades don't really match with the hanbo, but I, I like the effect. <laughs> and I'm jumping to all these different scenes, all these places in Korea, mm -hmm. some of which I've been. Uh, I don't, at the time, it was mostly places I was aware of that I think tourists might like. So did you do all the footage for this? Um, for you? Not all of the background footage. Some are still pictures, some are animations, some some are uh, videos other YouTubers made, but I asked for permission. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just a collection of everything I could find that would be enough to present Korea. So what was the main reason behind making this video? It was actually for a contest. Uh, the point of the contest was for foreigners to try to promote Korea to other foreigners, to make kind of like a tourism video, like in place of the official tourism videos, like how would you want to promote Korea? So at the time I actually had an idea of just making kind of a general Korea video. Yeah. And then I found out about the contest. I'm like, okay, that's perfect motivation. Nice. And so how long did it take you to do this from start to finish? It's about a month, yeah. One month, wow. And. Did you, how did you do with the uh, contest? I won, yeah. Congratulations. I knew that already. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And so what was your prize? The prize was a free flight and hotel to Tokyo, which oh. I guess some people thought it's weird. Why, why would you go to Tokyo for a Korea contest? But I mean, it's not going to be like a trip to Korea because only people in Korea could enter the contest. Right. So it seemed fair. Mm -hmm. And it was fun. It was it was a nice prize. Who did you go to Tokyo with? I told my younger brother ahead of time if I won the contest, he should visit Korea, and then we'll take the trip to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So then he can visit Asia for the first time. So he came, and it was fun. That's fantastic. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. So you can say that you are an award-winning yes. videographer <laughs> and producer. <laughs> I I can say that, and I guess I I haven't been like going out and saying it, but I would not mind promoting myself that way. Yeah. Well, considering the, the popularity of, of this video and the fact that you won an award, um, I think that a lot of people are curious, um, you know, why you're not doing this as a, like, a full-time job, because you, you do work 
for a Korean company, yes. Yeah. Um, well, for a while at least, like, like I don't think the quality was professional, but mm -hmm. for each new video I've been improving my quality, and some people have called my newest stuff professional, which surprises me and kind of scares me, because I kind of liked just being like a, a YouTube video maker. Mm -hmm. So uh, being told that my stuff is professional, I'm considering it now. Yes. Um, I particularly liked your Seoul Subway song video and partially because my voice used to be number one through eight really? in Seoul. Yeah, um, the English voice that. anyway. And it's still uh, lines five through eight. And I did the KTX and Busan and whatever. Oh, that's you. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> but, uh, and so when I saw your video, I was like, ah, yes, he's on you know, some of my favorite lines. So we were, we were on the subway together. Yes. <laughs> I remember when I first uh, did the English voice on the subway, my friends would you know, call me and be like, hey, look, I can hear you on. <laughs> but, um, but enough about me, this is about you. Yeah. And I want to know about how you began uh, thinking about doing the subway song, because you have gone to so many different, whoops, <laughs> your little friend wants to also be a part of the interview there. Um, so, so how did you start thinking about doing the subway song video? Um, the funny thing is that when my brother did visit Korea, mm -hmm. um, we took the subway for the first time. I had told him how much I like the subways. I mean, they're just, we come from New York and New York City subway is not that good. So uh, I was always impressed with them. And when he came here, he was impressed and he heard the jingle, the transfer jingle, and he yes. said, you should make a song based on this song. <laughs> and I knew that was a really good idea, but at the time I didn't know exactly what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So it just sat with me for like three quarters of a year. Finally, I got the, the melody and how the song would go. So I arranged it. And when I made the song, I, I thought this is such a good song. I didn't really know what the lyrics would be about, but I just felt like the song's so kind of positive and cheerful, like just cover the subway, just do as much about the subway as possible, throw all the facts and information in. And then I just went out and I'm like, okay, I need to go to all these different stations. Anything that visibly looks interesting. Yes. And in some case, like most of the video, I was actually there. But mm -hmm. some scenes, people think like it looks fake. <laughs> but I'm actually there, <laughs> which is I'm a, I'm a bit sad that it comes out looking fake. But yeah, I was all the, the scenes where I seem to be in a station, I am in a station. So it's really you and really in the Seoul subway. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting to me to know that you you made this video first by making the song and doing the lyrics yourself. Uh, and that comes from your background doing some music composition. Yeah. And I mean, I minored in music theory. I learned how to compose. I mean, I took classes back when I was like 10, 11. Mm -hmm. So I've always known how and I've always been interested in music. I'm always I'm not listening to like classical stuff, but I'm, I'm listening mostly to rock, but I pay attention to what's going on and I try to incorporate that into the stuff I write, just picking up stuff. And so my approach to the music videos is just to start with a song I'm interested in or that I would like to listen to personally. And then um, after the song concept is there and I I have the lyric concept too, but then I'll write the lyrics out and that determines what will visually be in the video. So let's go through your Soul Subway uh, video and uh, song. Let's uh, give me the play-by-play the -play here. Okay. Okay. Here, there we go. 
you've got quite a few views. It's um, over a half a million views, and I bet by the end of uh, the time that this show is aired, it's going to be at least double that, if not a lot more. That would be nice. <laughs> okay. Um, the funny thing with the beginning, I, I, a close friend has criticized my shirt with my name on it, and I was considering maybe not wearing it for the video. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, like, I need to do it, so that inspired the intro there, where I'm not wearing it first, and then I'm everywhere with the shirt. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of, I guess it makes people remember who I am. And I... You're running, running through the subway. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a lot of, like, speeding up the trains going by. This scene is great in that we planned it, so I just come on the train at that time, and we just did one take, and it worked out. That's fantastic. I can imagine that you learn a lot about uh, videography and, and producing just even by doing your own work, yeah? That is that is the only way I learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just trial and error and just seeing how it goes and if, if I can create the things that I have in my head and if I know how to do them. Mm -hmm. Now, I see that, that you like to wear sunglasses. <laughs> Are these the same pair of sunglasses that you wore for the first yeah. video? Yeah, I mean partly it's become my thing, but also I don't always know where to look at the camera. Mm -hmm. um, I mean in some videos, like I'm planning the next one, I probably won't. I guess it's the kind of effect. I think sunglasses are kind of cooler or, you know, they're associated with like a rock star image, so I just go with it. Well, definitely when people watch this uh, subway video, they can not only see how clean the subway systems are here in, in Seoul, but really how many kilometers long this is. Just, I wonder how many uh, miles you traveled, or kilometers <laughs> you traveled in oh. doing this. I mean, we went back and forth. It was like four different days, yeah. One day I went, I went filming by myself and I took maybe double the amount of footage that I used. I mean, I even crossed a bridge and shot trains from the outside and I, I didn't use that, but <laughs> um, yeah, we went pretty much everywhere. Well, you really get the sense of, of, of motion and traveling just by seeing this. I'm gonna lay down the lowdown on Hangul in four minutes. Pay attention, there's a quiz when it's finished. By King Sejong the Great, he tried to create a simple alphabet for all of you. Often get confused by how Seoul is spelled, but it's because Korean has a different bundle of vowels. Now everybody say ah like a camera and ah The sound is consistent. Check out guitar. We got sa so so su su, but then she like attack she and sushi. Former President Bushi, the youngest ace who used it in case you want to replace the leading consonant sound with nothing else. So throw a young in front. Closer free win or make an edgy sound if it's at the back like you're winning. Now I gotta beat you at two. And doggy, kiss it all. Last but not least, I'd like to ask you about your hunger rap okay. in that video. So I'm gonna take a look here and you can give me the play by play. So, what was the reason that you made this? Well, there was another contest I had found about, found out about, but uh, I found out. With two weeks remaining before the deadline, and I, I wasn't sure if I could make it in two weeks, but I already felt very strongly about how easy Hangul is to learn, just mm -hmm. like to learn it phonetically, just exactly how to pronounce it. Yeah. And I knew exactly what I wanted to say about mm -hmm. it. So all I had to think about was what, what will the song be and what will the background be. The background is very minimalist, uh, but I thought this kind of effect work well, just to pretty plainly like show the letters, show the words, mm -hmm. spell it out and just go over each letter. Um, not too much to it, but it was kind of fun. I just want to make it as interesting visually and fun in the lyrics as possible. So did you, when did you learn Korean? Um, it was before I really had any formal like interest in Korea, like mm -hmm. just vaguely. And I, I started noticing Hangul just cause like it's very distinct looking. Yes. So one day I just went to a local bookstore and I, uh, the introductory to Korean book was cheap so I decided to buy it mm -hmm. and I learned it within a week. <laughs> well they say that uh, Korean and the Korean script is one of the most scientifically based um, kind of written languages because right. it follows the shape of one's mouth um, and, and it uh, was an invented language. Yes, yes. Um, the, the cool thing is that you 
by making this video in two weeks, that, that in itself, by yourself, is just pretty amazing that you've done it in such a short time. But this is definitely a primer for anyone who wants to even delve into learning the Korean language, wouldn't you say? I think so. It, yeah, it just gives a pretty straightforward overview and just of how simple it can be. I mean, mm -hmm. anyone, I guess if they just stop the video at certain parts and just memorize the characters, mm -hmm. they could learn it. Yeah. <laughs> so a learning tool and also what happened with the contest this time? Oh, I won this one too. Yeah. <laughs> so two-time award-winning um, yeah. videos. I was proud of this one. Just I couldn't believe that in that short time I could produce something I was reasonably happy with that other people were happy with too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what was this for that you won? Um, the prize was uh, 5 million won. 5 million won. Oh, so roughly about 4,500 US dollars. Yeah. Nice. And uh, did you spend it all in one place? No. It's gone now, but it lasted a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, Michael, it's been really fun to like look through a lot of your videos here, and I think that a lot of people will um, enjoy watching them as much as I did. I hope um, so. If you had to talk about some videos that uh, were um, the most um, interesting to make, maybe of these three, which one would you say? Um, I mean, the Subway song was fun just because I had never really gone out like to various locations to film. I, I hadn't done that much like outdoor stuff, mostly just indoor special effects. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of just a challenge to, to go with a friend to some location and see like what we can do here, what we can do with it. I mean, in, the, in an early scene in the subway song, I'm just kind of running along the track and I just open my arms. And that was, that was not like we hadn't planned that. I had filmed the end of it on a, the opposite track and was coming back around to meet my friend and he just started filming it and so I'm like okay I'll just do something and it just looked like fun so I threw it in there and people commented like oh it just looks like you're having fun along like in the subway stations and I really just wanted to include that feeling so it worked out like that. That's awesome. So Michael clearly there are people who absolutely love your videos and I'm a big fan now too of some of your videos and yet there's also been a little bit of criticism too no yeah um it takes various forms i guess in the beginning before i had many videos uh i mean my sense of humor is generally sarcastic i mean which doesn't really fly in korean culture no i no. mean so in the earlier music videos some of them like had some sarcastic points and some people said like oh you don't really love korea oh. um I mean, I, I wouldn't have made those videos if I, if I wasn't interested in Korea. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've, I've toned back, like I, I know how to get my point across better, mm -hmm. I think. Um, I still make, uh, I guess, vlog type videos where I'm talking about various things. And I talk about, you know, some positive things, some not negative things, but I kind of approach them in a fair way, looking at the good and bad points. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes if people disagree with me, they'll voice that complaint or they don't like me broaching certain subjects, mm -hmm. but... What are some topics that uh, you felt were um, kind of touchy subjects for some Koreans to handle? Um, I, I thought of making a full-on Dokdo video, but I made a video talking about why it's touchy for especially foreigners to talk about Dokdo, mm -hmm. that in general, uh, Koreans feel so strongly about the subject that they kind of want to hear the opinion they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And even if I tried to make a video looking at all the angles, it just wouldn't really go over well. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of made a video about what it would be like to talk about it <laughs> without talking about it specifically. Um, so, so being indirectly talking about something indirectly. Yeah, more yeah. about talking about like how acceptable it is to talk about certain subjects. Mm -hmm. Before, this is about history and politics. This is not about facts. Yes, there are historical records, but if this were just an issue about the facts, let's say Korea had a record. This concretely proves that Dokdo has always belonged to Korea. And then when the Japanese see that document, they'd say, yes, you know what? I acknowledge that this is concrete proof that Dokdo belongs to Korea. And then when the UN sees it, 
every member says, yes, I see that this offers concrete proof about the issue. There is no such resolution. This is not an issue about facts. If this were an issue about facts, it would have been settled long ago. It's not a black and white issue. And because of that, my opinion on the matter isn't a black or white opinion. Yes, I do have an opinion about who it may belong to, but that's not really what I'm most concerned about. But I guess the question is, are people going to freak out if I give my opinion? And should they freak out? Anyway. Now, now, do you see yourself as someone who is uh, ready to to make a lot of social commentary on Korea? Because you've been here for five years, yes? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I try only to make videos if I really am sure of the topic and what I want to say about it. Mm -hmm. um, I've backed off in certain cases, just, I mean, maybe I needed more information or I didn't have a strong opinion. Um, I've gotten a lot of comments saying like, oh, could you make videos about the plastic surgery industry? But I mean, I know a bit, but I don't really know what that, what I would say that they want to hear. I mean, I think those people want to hear like, oh, it's everybody's doing it or it's too, I don't know, it's a, they, I think they want to hear some kind of negative thing. and. I just don't really have overwhelming opinions about it. Mm -hmm. It exists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As it does in, in every country. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to know the exact percentages. Um, but in, in terms of you um, and, and your videos, you know, you have your right to make whatever videos you want. And it's up to the audience to decide whether they're going to embrace your videos or not. But I mean, who's, who is your main audience for these videos? I feel like my main audience is people like me who, who are familiar with Korea, but maybe also have a different view of it or want to explore a different view. I mean, mm -hmm. Even if people don't want me to talk about a certain topic, I really try to present a fair point of view and try to look at the good points and bad points and the, the different opinions. And maybe maybe not, not convince people of my opinion, but just get them thinking more about certain topics. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I just want to kind of get people talking about certain things, mm -hmm. not in a bad way, but just like, oh, do we have to treat this the way we've always treated mm -hmm. it? Clearly, you have some talent in doing this because not only have you won some awards, but you've gotten a lot of views on YouTube. How does that feel for people to, to for you to know that lots of people have watched your YouTube videos? Um, it's surprising. I, I never expected people to watch them when I started, and I'm always surprised at how many people have watched some of them. Um, what's it? Even like people have commented that I have a very unique perspective on how I approach this topic. So even those ways, like they're not controversial, but still um, people said that after the subway song that it made them kind of appreciate the subway in a new way. And that was the best kind of feedback. And a really interesting uh, comment that I got from a lot of foreigners who used to live in Korea, they mm -hmm. said that video made them miss all the good things about Korea. Oh, <laughs> that must have been nice to hear. Yeah, I was just surprised. I like a lot of people said that. Tell me about some of the, the craziest commentary that you've heard regarding your videos. Um, one thing, OK, so um, because of the Subway song, I won a award from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And for that award, I was invited to the YouTube uh, their, their headquarters and also some K-pop acts got awards for, I'm not sure, like very popular videos or something. Mm -hmm. And so I, I made a video of the award ceremony and mm -hmm. I filmed the K-pop stars that were there. I guess the leader of Super Junior was there and I got a comment on that video. Like I was mostly in my video. I was mm -hmm. just talking to the camera and then I briefly showed some of the stars. And I got a comment that said, you're lucky for winning an award, but you're even luckier for being able to see the leader of Super Junior. <laughs> and at first, I, I didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I just thought, like, are you, why would you tell me that? Was it a uh, Korean person who No, that? no, no. It was just some kind of K-pop fan. Uh -huh. I mean, most people who saw that video, the video, I think, was four minutes long, and mm -hmm. I was in it for at least three minutes. And everyone just commented for seeing the K-pop fans. Well, that, sho that shows yeah. you, though, how popular K-culture is. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of it was discouraging because I thought, like, I'm in that video, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys not hear what I'm talking about? <laughs> so, 
just some frustration that I guess I guess maybe they were overwhelmed by the fact that like just in a a regular person got to film these people up close. I mean, I guess that can be exciting. I wasn't personally excited because I wasn't a personal fan of them. Um, but that was kind of, that one comment kind of took me back. Okay. Do you have any stories that, uh, that are like letters from fans or, or critics maybe? I got a really weird letter from one foreigner. Mm -hmm. I guess he'd lived in Korea for a while and he's married but also to like a non-Korean wife. So like I figured just based on what little I knew about him, he could have been like a reasonably happy guy. And he said, he said, um, I have a problem with 90% of the foreigners in Korea. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like they're kind of a bad type who just come here just to have a good time, to date women and to kind of show off. And I, and I was thinking, okay, like that's that's something that we could discuss. But then he he says, uh, based on just watching your YouTube videos, I think you're that kind of person. And here's why. And he lists point by point, <laughs> like what he thinks I do, wh who he thinks I am, based on <laughs> those videos. He's like, you take yourself so seriously in these videos. You're full of yourself. I'm sure you, you've been studying Korean just to impress girls. Aww. And there are all these things that were the opposite of what's true that I was so amused by his description of who he thinks so I am. So he's basically saying that you're a player. Like you're a player and you're making these videos just to get girls. Yeah, not, yeah. And, and that I just think that I'm so great or <laughs> something like, even though like, Clearly, a lot of the videos are just silly as anything. Like, I, I was just so amused. So I just asked him, like, please tell me more about this person that you think I am. He, he said at one point in the letter, I admit I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what do you have to say to that now? I mean, fine. Like, he, he would write back to me after each new video I put up, each new a major music video. I mean, I assume. He found out about them, maybe because friends liked them and posted mm -hmm. them and he saw it on Facebook. So finally I said, you know, I can't convince you, you're already convinced of your own conclusion, but I'm not that type of person. You only have my word to take for it, but mm -hmm. that's all I can give you. And he's like, okay, like, Aww. and he's, he's like, okay, I'll respond more to that later. And he never replied. <laughs> Well, with uh, some celebrity and notoriety does come a little bit of criticism, so it's probably a sign that you've kind of made it more, more towards the, the, the bigger time. I don't, and... yeah, I don't mind <laughs> criticism at all. I mean, mm -hmm. if it's, if it's well-reasoned, I might agree with it. And mm -hmm. if it's not well, if there's no reasons at all, then I don't care. So. Well, <laughs> well, keep up the good work with all of your videos. And um, now I think we'd like to go and check out you uh, in action in your place. And if you can show me all the stuff that you're, you've been uh, doing and uh, how you set up everything, that'd be really cool. All right, let's, let's go to it. Okay, great. Nice. Um, this is where I do all my stuff, so it's partly my living space and partly my workspace. Great, so we're going into the studio. Yes. Where it all happens, great. <laughs> well, my, wow. My place. Michael, thank you for inviting me into your home and studio. Oh, yeah. it's, it's very cozy, very uh, manly. <laughs> yeah. So, so sh show me what you've got here. Um, I guess I have some stuff over on the bookshelf over here. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's a YouTube. May I pick it up? Yeah. That's a YouTube award. Oh, this is your famous YouTube award. Look at that. I feel like I've won an award. Mm. Wow. So tell, what is, what is this all about? Pretty nice. It says, it says about, it's for the Soul Subway song mm -hmm. and, um, best you I guess that's user generated content mm -hmm. and uh, and the date of the award. very cool wow and and what do we have here we've got another uh, type of award here oh. this is from Korea brand oh the Korea brand for the the contest I won for the Hangul rap oh okay wow 
So, so soon we're going to see probably this entire top shelf be covered with awards. We'll see. I guess I'm, I'm due one this year. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I see something that I recognize from one of your videos, the cowbell. <laughs> Okay. I only need one. Only one. I, go with I want one, one too. <laughs> More cowbell. I feel like I'm a professional here. Yeah. And you? Can you do it better than me? Uh, yeah, you can do it better than me. You do like different noises. It's fun. Wow. Here. So the backside. Wow. Well, thank you for letting me hit your cowbell. <laughs> Wow, this is a pretty hefty laptop here. Um, like here where I keep all the sound files. So for example, when I was mixing all the parts for the Soul Subway song, mm -hmm. so they're all here. I have the, what is it, the original clip. I've heard that somewhere before, vaguely yeah. familiar. And so then I added everything else around it. So you created all the other sounds to this. Yeah. I mean, there's... That's incredible. Like, what's it? I added the melody with mm -hmm. other instruments just to round it out. So, so mixing you taught yourself. Is there something that you learned from a school or anything else? I mean, I guess you, you study this stuff if you do mu music engineering, but I, I didn't get a chance. I didn't even see any music engineering courses at my school, so... Mm -hmm just had to dive into it, see if I could do it. <laughs> I'd love to see a list of your, your works and the songs. I mean, I have a file of all the, the major projects oh. I've worked on here. I see all of the Adoshi song and the uh, Hangul rap, Kimbap Mother, Peppero Day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So what can you show me next? Your, your videos, maybe? Yeah, I can show you the editing process um, because it's kind of simple layers. I like the part where you have the the uh, around your neck like a necklace. All right. Um, that was not too hard, but like the eungs are split in half. I see. I don't know where the other ones went. So like this one can move like so the the top half is behind and the I see. <laughs> bottom half is in front. Very clever. I love it. And I I really like your shirt. Do you have that shirt here at home too? I do. Yeah, can you can you show it to me? It's in Ooh. my closet. Oh, there you go. My crew. That's the, the same shirt, the famous shirt from all the videos. Yeah. <laughs> Coming back here, I see also that you, you do have quite a few little gadgets here. I bought a, uh, some of them recently, so I haven't used them yet with music videos. The one I use most often is just the camcorder. Oh, yeah. From this tiny camera, you did all of that? Yeah. Wow. Um, and and I, so all stuff that you can get from pretty much any kind of you know, electronic store. You don't really have super fancy equipment. You've got some good software. Right? I mean, yeah, most of the stuff I've been just using camcorders, which aren't like the preferred uh, method, but mm -hmm. it's not, yeah, it's not the technology, it's what you do with it. Yeah. Michael, where does that creativity come from? Just, I don't know, I guess I've always been imaginative. I mean, as soon as I get something that, an idea that seems to work, mm -hmm. And I just mull over it for, for a long time, just mm -hmm. making sure I, I'm in love with it. Because mm -hmm. if I get bored with it, then it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. So most of these ideas just kind of stay with me for a while. And then I'm like, OK, I have to do something with it. Wow. Michael, let's go online and take a look at some of the comments people have left for your YouTube videos. OK. Um, here, the first one up here that I see is, ha, 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 ha. You are just too funny. I'm going to go to Gyeongbokgung and Hanbok this summer. <laughs> okay, and uh, I'm gonna subscribe. Lol, this is lol. This is too awesome. You're really brilliant. It's very creative and fun. This is awesome. Thumbs up. Um, yeah, you've got a good, healthy blend of English and Korean comments. So you're you're doing a pretty good job there, Michael. Keep up the good work.
Wow. Yeah. I like feedback. It's good. Mm -hmm. it, it lets me know. I mean, it's nice to have a lot of hits, but if there's a lot of hits and no comments, like, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Like, people don't care or they, I don't know, I can't tell if no one says anything. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to go and leave you a comment or two. This is, uh, this is really great. Well, Michael, thank you so much for showing me all this. All right. Thanks for coming by. Um, to me, Korea is, I guess, it's like my adopted home. I just, I feel like this is where I enjoy living. It's the place I chose to live, despite having lived in New York for most of the rest of my life. And I just enjoy the culture, the feeling that I get when I'm living here. I, I feel motivated. I feel just that I'm doing things here that I couldn't do in New York. So, Michael, let's start from the very beginning. Okay. Um, you were uh, born and bred in the U.S., yep. right? Uh, in Long Island, is that right? Yeah, I've lived there. I had lived there all my life up until high, at the end of high school. And then from there you went on to East Asian Studies, right? Yes. It, why, why East Asian Studies? It took a while to come to that uh, decision because I was interested in music, but mm -hmm. I didn't want to major music there. So I had developed an interest in Korean culture by, uh, from living in New York City. Like I had started to notice Korean businesses. I had mm -hmm. noticed like a Korean music video program. And I just, I don't know, something just appealed to me. And when I started uh, to learn Hangul and I realized that it was easy enough to read it, I just thought, okay, like I should learn just more about this culture that I don't know much about. Mm -hmm. And I can do like the minors for music and stuff like that. And then I can go abroad and I, I did, I was an exchange student at Yonsei. So with, with your program at Yonsei, you were obviously a student there. Um, what is it like now as you know, a member of the real world and having been an exchange student? I mean, it was, it kind of introduced me to, well, to life and soul, and mm -hmm. I kind of used it to determine whether or not I would want to live here, and I thought it was enjoyable enough, and I mean, things haven't changed that much. I still enjoy living here. So what is it about being in Korea that, that makes you want to stay here? It's, I guess, kind of the lifestyle, or things, things, especially compared to New York, things are more social here, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, Everything's open until like 4 a.m., right? <laughs> there's that, and it's because of transportation and just all the restaurants, cafes, bars, like it's just so easy to meet people, and you're like, where should we go? And you have all these options. You just pick a place and just hang out. Now, are you really close with your family? I mean, we're not physically close, but... <laughs> In your heart. <laughs> yeah. We still communicate all the time. Through, like, internet and... Thankfully, Skype yeah. And, and they, they can watch my videos to see what I'm up to. And now they'll be able to see you, and as well as people in 188 different countries. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they're really proud of you, yeah? I, I even send them when there's, like, a news article or something. I send it to them, and they can't read it, but they still kind of get the gist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so what is it like now? I know that you've got a younger brother and a younger sister, too. Yeah. Um, I heard that what she was at one point uh, studying in France? Yes, she tried to live abroad. Mm -hmm. I guess it, she didn't enjoy it as much, so she went back home and yeah. now she has a job in New York City, so it's good for her. So, so would you say that, uh, that your family is overall really supportive of your work here? Yeah, they've become very supportive. I mean, they don't understand everything, but they appreciate how much effort I put into it. And your, your regular day job is not as a you know, video producer um, or a celebrity. You work at a uh, Korean publishing house, is that right? Yeah. And uh, doing what type of work? It's mostly, uh, it's for like English textbooks, like mm -hmm. uh, writing, editing, proofreading. So it's uh, more about, I don't know, knowledgeable stuff like English grammar. Mm -hmm. So it's not creative, but mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not bad work. So, so while it's not really creative, it gives you your, your ability to work and, and to make a living, here, yeah. right? And have the visa to be here. But, but your true passion, it seems like, is to do some, some video work and production, yeah? Yeah. I'm grateful that my job allows me the time to make videos. 
so like I can balance both. Mm -hmm. Now, where do you see yourself in about five years from now? I, I, I could not believe that I was actually, that I was gonna make music videos. I mean, I can't <laughs> plan that far ahead. Even I look back, and I've been doing this for two years and I think that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Do you find that there are people who are, are jealous of your kind of notoriety and uh, and all the press coverage that you've been getting here? Um, if so, they haven't really expressed it, which is nice. I mean, I think people recognize how much effort I put into my stuff. Mm -hmm. It's more than other people I've seen. I would like to see other people who do such big projects, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know I think people see that I kind of deserve some of the feedback I get. <laughs> So, so if you had to choose how people would remember you here in Korea, if you had to go back stateside, um, how would you want for people to remember you? I guess for now, I'd probably be remembered as the guy who did that Subway song. <laughs> but that's not, that's not a bad way to go out. I just hope I can produce more things that are even more popular. Well, Michael, it's been so fun to talk to you and to get your your play-by-play -play feedback on, on the work that you've done on all these amazing videos. Um, uh, thanks for being interested and taking a look at them. Yeah, well, you know, you were kind of the unofficial ambassador um, of Korea to, to YouTube land and, and uh, in TV and the Internet. So, uh, so thank you on behalf of yeah. all Koreans. Thanks. Maybe next time it won't be unofficial. <laughs> I don't know. Well, great. It's been great working with you right. today. And let's, let's head out. All right.